strongest sorcerer of the modern era, the honored one, wielder of the six eyes, Satoru Gojo. Without a doubt, one of the most powerful characters in the entire series, Gojo holds an extensive arsenal of abilities that place him far above the rest. From existence erasure through hollow purple to information overload through unlimited void. However, in today's video, our attention falls onto the crutch of Gojo Satsuru's powers, complete invulnerability through the use of the infinity technique. Neutral Limitless, infinity, allows Gojo to bring the metaphorical concept of infinity into real life. The user is capable of creating an infinite distance in the area immediately around their body, making it take an infinite amount of time for any moving object or energy to hit them. In effect, this essentially slows down everything that approaches the user to a grinding halt. Nothing can reach the user unless they allow it to do so. In the context of a fight, this means that no physical or energy-based attack is capable of reaching the user, making most attempts to even scratch them be fruitless. This technique is fully automatic and does not need the user to even perceive or react to an attack for it to function. In Volume 0, Miguel states that the Infinity Technique even manipulates space down to an atomic level, and based on Gojo's own thoughts within the Hidden Inventory arc, it can be assumed that by the time of the main story, he can even disseminate things as complex as poisons and stop them from reaching his body. So to be frank, it is a completely impenetrable defense. So let's poke some holes in it. In this video, I will be stating and ranking the many counters to Gojo Satcher's Infinity. Some prove functional and successful within the series, and others based on pure speculation. I definitely haven't thought of everything though, so if you have any counters of your own, feel free to drop them down into the comment section below. I'll be listing out counters from least effective to most effective, at least in my opinion. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, and hey, why not subscribe while you're down there too? It's completely free and you'd be helping my small channel out a bunch. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Domain amplification is essentially introduced into the story for the sole purpose of cancelling Gojo's infinity. While used in other cases, this is the premier reason for its existence. The technique functions by enveloping the user within a domain allowing them to neutralize any and all techniques they come in contact with as long as they are able to physically touch them. While this seems like a surefire way to counter infinity, there are some massive issues that arise when using this ability. First, and most prominent, is that you are completely locked out from using your technique, restricting you to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. This means that if you have any highly powerful or destructive techniques, you still won't be able to reach Gojo Satsuru with them. While being forced into close quarters combat isn't necessarily a bad thing, for the most part, you are at the mercy of who you're fighting, and it's not as if Satsuru needs his technique to deal damage in close quarters. In fact, it's pretty much the opposite, consistently dominating anyone who dares to clash with him. In other issues that, in most cases, it doesn't even immediately allow you to break through. You have to push against infinity to reach the user, and unfortunately for you, the user is capable of pushing back, possibly strengthening their infinity to even overwhelm you, like in the case of Hanami, who was literally crushed to death trying to fight back against it. Still, being able to consistently land hits on the user is nothing to snuff at, so while it does have a fair share of its issues, I'll be leaving it in C tier. There are two separate cursed tools that have been used to bypass Gojo Satyr's infinity. The Black Rope, used by Miguel, crafted by sorcerers in Africa, and more prominently, the Inverted Spur of Heaven, used by Toji Fushiguro. Both share the same general effect of nullifying any cursed technique they come into contact with, making them both effective counters to Gojo's infinity, though due to the inherent makeup of both weapons, one is simply far superior to the other. The Black Rope is capable of disrupting and cancelling any cursed technique it physically touches, getting through the infinity before landing strikes on the opponent with whip-like attacks. Due to the nature of the damage it deals, these attacks are inherently non-lethal, meaning to deal the most damage, you'll likely have to wear your opponent down with repeated whipping attacks. While this alone is a massive setback, the biggest thing holding the Black Rope back is its limited nature. In just one fight with Gojo, Miguel went from having a handful of this rope to about nothing left. 
While this might have simply been due to the potency of the infinity, this video still focuses about counters to the technique, so this still stands as a horrendous drawback. So while the black rope doesn't have the same flaw of being pushed back like domain amplification, it still falls short due to its limited nature and the inherent non-lethality of its attacks. Thus, I will be placing it in C tier. The inverted spur of heaven on the other hand, does pretty much everything the black rope does, but so much better. For starters, due to its inherent shape as a sharp blade, it is incredibly more lethal than the black rope is, capable of slashing, stabbing, or piercing the enemy while passing straight through the infinity, only needing a few attacks to land lethal hits on the opponent. Besides this, there are seemingly no limits on its amount of uses, as unlike the black rope, it doesn't dissipate with use. Not to mention, when paired with the chain of a thousand mouths, it gains what is literally infinitely more reach than the black rope has, removing one of the few benefits that tool had over this one. Overall, the inverted spur of heaven is an overall upgrade to the black rope in pretty much every department, and is an incredible way to get past the infinity. So much so that Gojo had to either seal it overseas or outright destroy it in fear of it being used against him again. Thus, it lands in A tier. Now we start moving on to the cream of the crop, the very best of the best counters against infinity. And starting off strong, we have one of the most basic and universal counters within the entire series, belonging to countless characters who are capable of gaining its effects, domain expansions, and then sure hit techniques. Sure hit techniques are interesting in that they don't have to travel to hit their opponent. While for some, it may seem like an attack is being launched out to hit the enemy, this is in fact not the case. As described by Maki within Dagon's Domain, sure hit techniques only exist after they hit you. This is what makes them sure hit. Basically, there's absolutely no way to dodge or block attacks from a sure hit technique. If the user wants to hit you, they will hit you. Thus, sure hit techniques go straight through Gojo's infinity, as they quite literally appear on the enemy's body. For some of these techniques, like Dagon's Death Swarm or Sukuna's Cleave and Dismantle, a fairly large amount of damage might be instantly done onto the target. However, with other techniques, like Mahito's Idol Soul Transfiguration or Yorozu's Perfect Spear, it might just flat out kill the enemy instantly. Thus, this is of course an S tier counter. In theory anyway, in application, Gojo can of course expand his domain, which will usually overpower the enemies, and if worse comes to worse, he still has a combination of simple domain, falling blossom emotion, and reverse curse technique to counter. And now we begin to set foot into the realm of manga spoilers. So just as a general warning, the content up ahead will be discussing some of the latest events in the manga. Thus, you have been warned. In the battle against the strongest, Maharaga stands as one of Sukuna's greatest trump cards, due to its innate ability, that being the ability to adapt to any and all phenomena before overcoming it. Thus, as a phenomena itself, infinity is no exception. As the fight rages on, through Sukuna's own interference and planning, Maharaga gains an adaptation to Gojusatsu's infinity. The first adaptation allows the Shikigami to essentially completely ignore it, going straight through the infinity to land strikes on Gojo's body. Furthermore, it seems that by merely being in contact with the sorcerer, infinity is completely shut down, allowing attacks from other sources to reach the user. It's a lot like domain amplification in its functionality. However, it cannot be pushed back against and completely shuts down infinity when used. However, while this adaptation is impressive, it is the second adaptation that really settles this match. After being egged on by Sukuna, Maharaga gains an offensive adaptation, allowing it to unleash a ranged slashing attack, much like Sukuna's dismantle, capable of cutting straight through Gojo's infinity and then some. It's a bit funny to think that, had this attack not been aimed at his arm, and instead his torso or head, the fight would have ended instantly right here, and chapter 236 would have come a lot sooner. Ranged, powerful, and seemingly too fast for Gojo Satsu to react to. Of course, the King of Curses just had to have such an ability for himself. Thus, using the adaptation as a blueprint, Sukuna develops the World Cutting Slash, capable of releasing a dismantle that not only cut through objects, but space itself, ignoring any form of physical boundary and simply bisecting the target. As this is the attack that ended Gojo Satsuru, it only makes sense that it stands as the penultimate counter to infinity. As such, 
both Maharaga and the World Cutting Slash fall into the S tier. And with that, the tier list is complete. Every single counter to Gojo Satchel's Infinity, from the niche to the unfair. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed, feel free to smash the like button and then maybe black flash the subscribe button too. With that all done, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Peace out.